Okay, um, I'm here in Lisbon on a beautiful day with um, Ulf, and I'm just going to ask him some questions in relation to um, our Opal project, which he is the leader and guru of. Ulf uh, is your creator of Opal. Opal's vision is to improve the quality and innovation in the use of OER and that we as a consortium intend to do that through the articulation of the practices around the creation, use and management of OER. And we've defined a new term called Open Educational Practices which we defined as OEP constitute the range of practices around the creation, use and management of OER with the intent to improve quality and innovation in education. We're working at the moment towards developing some guidelines about how to better understand OEP and how we can improve those in terms of how OER are used. So what I'd like to do is ask you some questions uh, in relation to that and get your thoughts on the vision and uh, some of the associated opportunities and challenges. So first, for the camera, could you just state your name, your position and your institution? My name is Ulf Ehlers and uh, I'm working as a professor for technology and health learning in the University of Augsburg. And you're also director of the OPA project? Director of the OPA project and um, the vice president of the European Foundation for Quality and E-Learning. Great, thanks. Um, first of all, a kind of broad question, what opportunities do you think OER offer for education from your perspective? To me, OER are very much associ associated with the process of transforming education. Um, we are in educational institutions still very much focused on instruction and on teaching mm -hmm. to students or pupils or professionals in adult education as well. And um, on the other hand, our vision of education is actually um, to help students to become autonomous learners to work in their industry jobs um, as employees who are innovating their workplaces. So on the one hand we are teaching them, on the other hand we want them to break free from this guiding sites and, and rules we provide for them. So open educational resources to me provide a vehicle to help educational professionals and educational organizations to go down a little further this route of transforming education to come from a more transmissive mode to an open mode in which students are together developing materials and in which learners are sharing materials with uh, teachers as well. So sharing is really in the center and sharing demands for a sharing culture mm. to, to break open this, this, uh, this wall in the, in the heads we often have that um, everything what teachers say is right and uh, students' role is to, like a sponge, um, receive the knowledge mm. to break this open and to come to a sharing and coaching uh, relation of those. Great, thanks very much, that's a fantastic vision. Uh, now the opposite question is, uh, what do you think are the key challenges in achieving this vision? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So what do you think are the key challenges in uh, achieving this vision? Well, I think um, the key challenge actually um, is a challenge of attitude. Mm. Attitude uh, does not mean that people don't want, but that means that um, what OER is asking, open educational resource usage, or open educational practices, is asking is actually to leave the route which we are usually going down in educational institutions. We need to understand that the materials created by a colleague could also be used by us. Mm. And that's difficult for many of us. Mm. We need to understand that all these materials for teaching which we have in long hour 
hours written down, we can suddenly provide to others and they're just using it. Mm. But the flip side of this is that the thoughts we are putting in there, the energy, the um, concepts, they're used by others, they are spread and they might come back to us in a feedback, reviewed and improved form. Mm. That's one big benefit of the use of OER uh, and of working with OER, but it's also a challenge because it really demands to understand, to share. It demands for a sharing culture in organizations. Great. Um, as you know, uh, as part of the work of the project, we did a review of case studies of OER initiatives and practice. And from that, we um, identified and extracted a set of dimensions um, of OE, OEP pra uh, OER practice. And in particular, um, we identified four main ones. Practices around strategies and policy to do with OER. Uh, practices to do with or examples of par barriers and success factors. Practices and tools and tool practice and how they're being used. And finally, practices to do with skills development and support. Can you say a little bit about your reflections on these dimensions? And is you, do you think there's anything else we should include? Is there anything we've missed that's glaringly obvious? I think that uh, the uh, dimensions which you mentioned are covering basically the whole range of activities mm -hmm. from the bottom-up learner-teacher yep. interaction, the learning interaction, up to the top management involvement uh, providing support to teachers, educational professionals through policies mm -hmm. where they are making the work in the field of sharing resources a relevant activity in an organization through a policy. Um, this is very, very important to, for educational managers, for leaders of institutions to understand that through policies they can make activities within their organizations in the field of OER relevant activities mm -hmm. to the professionals and to the learners as well. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Um, so I think it's really um, what, what is needed and what is also covered by the dimension is really a systemic approach mm -hmm. which is addressing the different levels of an institution which is also addressing the environment in which an institution is operating. So the policy level of, of, of a country, of a region, uh, is, is asked to support this as well. What, what I find is missing, but also what is very, very difficult to capture, is um, it takes an evangelist to convince people. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas we have a dimension which is relating to HR development, skills development, to help people, to help teachers developing their skills. It's also necessary that um, in each organization an individual OER movement mm -hmm. is supported and fostered, like growing a little plant, mm -hmm. uh, where people might also have questions in the beginning and um, might have to make their experience and to experience the beneficial elements also of using OERs for themselves before they are um, seeing open educational resources not as a second grade resource but just as another textbook alternative mm -hmm. which they incorporate into their own teaching activities. So this, this grassroots stimulating impulses mm -hmm. are very, very important and are also difficult to describe in a, in a guideline. Yeah, sure. And of course, within that, you're identifying in particular four different kinds of stakeholders, the learners, the learning professionals, the managers, and those at a policy perspective. And the final question is, um, the plan is to use these uh, dimensions of OEP to um, provide a set of guidelines for those different kinds of stakeholders. So how do you think those guidelines might be developed and how do you see them uh, being used by the different stakeholders? Um, I think it's, it's a challenge to provide a guideline for such a complex process which not only um, relies on an individual person achieving something or or wanting to do
do something which also relies on the environment in which he or she is operating, mm -hmm. the school or the university, the institution. Mm -hmm. um, I think a guideline should do two things. The first thing is it should convey the awareness that open educational practices need a convinced context. So it should address not only one level, not only one target group, but should also provide information and guidance for other target groups involved in the institution. Like you said, from the learner level, to the professional, to the leadership, and also the policy level. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, I think it should not uh, punish people. Mm -hmm. It should not look into the deficits it should open, um, guidelines should open uh, learning opportunities. It should show where am I currently and what would be the next step um, on my personal path to maturity in using open educational resources and in opening my own educational practices as a learner as well as a teacher also. Brilliant, thank you, that's very insightful. And finally, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I think um, many of the efforts we are doing is, are really relying uh, on the help of a community mm -hmm. which inside institutions should build so that you can ally, ally with, uh, with uh, people who are thinking alike, that you can ally with um, people who are having experience in this field, that you can make open educational practices a relevant activity yes. and that you can develop um, an, a practice, open, open culture of openness actually, which is not an individual task but which is really uh, growing a community um, which can then in turn give you guidance and uh, advice as well. Fantastical um, and look forward to hearing more about how OPA goes on. Thank you for your time. Thank you.